the way they have the highest red shifts. There's a constant called the Hubble constant, which is a uh, measured constant which astronomers have adopted and say that depending on the redshift something has a certain distance so the greater the redshift the farther it is away according to the Hubble constant and this was discovered by Hubble back at the turn of the century at the same time when Einstein was coming out with special and general relativity the issue here for the common man on the street is the following that uh, the the redshift data, I'll just bring it down and simplify it, did not add up. So astronomers invented what they call dark matter. They said, well, gee, if we have all this matter out here, then that would resolve the light curves for the galaxy arm rotation, and it would solve some of our issues with the Big Bang Theory. So they invented this stuff called dark matter. Well, dark matter has some very strange properties. It turns out to be the the most amount of matter in the universe, the bulk of matter in the universe would be dark matter, which is contrary to our own intuitive and experimental evidence that the most matter is what gives off the most amount of light, and also contradicts the very core concepts of the, say, the formation of a solar system, the standard explanations where if you have matter, it's going to coalesce, and it's going to create a star, and it's going to create light. So how can all this matter exist out there, not coalesce, and not make light that we ultimately could see? And uh, don't let that bother the astronomers, though, in spite of the fact they've never detected any dark matter, and only have looked at residual effects that they think might be caused by dark matter. They've never discovered any, and none of these experiments, none of, none of these concepts can be proven in a laboratory because the cosmos is too big to get into your laboratory. The bottom line is for the general public. Uh, I also defined back in the late 70s what I call the induced electric dipole redshift. It's an experimentally verifiable source of redshift that is caused by an electric field around a star or a quasar or a galactic nucleus. There is a subtle combination of gravity, which is the glue of the cosmos, and electromagnetic interactions, which when put together explains all of the data that we see without creating new bizarre theories. And the new bizarre theory people, the string theory people, the theory of everything people, the uh, dark matter people, or the let's modify equations for no real reason at all people, uh, all have one thing in common. They're, every time new data appears, they have to modify their theories. And one of them said it best, they're too far down the road, they said, in this Big Bang, you know, uh, dark matter theoretical construct of cosmology. They're too far down the road to look at anything else. And that's where science is today. We have the dogma, which is more strict than the strictest religion, and they can't see beyond their noses. So all of the money being spent in science today is marching down the wrong road. Bringing this discussion back to our own solar system and planet Earth, what does this have to do with you on Earth? Well, it actually has a lot to do with you on Earth because it turns out that any stellar object like our Sun, like a galactic nucleus, like a quasar, which is a new young forming galaxy, all of these have something in common. They all are fusion engines. They all burn hydrogen. And it's not in their cores, it's up at their surfaces. So once again, another basic theory of cosmology has to go by the wayside and these sacred cows are too big for astronomy and the cosmological theorists to let go of. But let's just look at the what I call the correct structure of physics. And these are basic concepts that everybody out there can understand. So the question is, if you can understand it, why do the people with PhDs in physics and astrophysics not understand it? Well, the answer is clear. 
they're marching down the wrong road. But anyway, here's the bottom line, the very simple result is that the fusion engines, the stars, the galax galactic nuclei and quasars, all produce a proton wind that produces around these objects a non-uniform electric field. This, by the way, is what drives our weather. This is what causes comets to form. This is what causes new planets to form. This is what causes our solar system to be dynamic. And this is what causes any new objects coming into our solar system, like a large planet X type object, to look like a comet. Astronomers are completely wrong about the concept of comets. They think they're little snowballs that melt. And in spite of the fact that they've taken pictures at close range of many comets now, never seeing a trace of ice or snow or water, and certainly nothing coming off the nucleus to form a tail, they still reiterate the ridiculous concept that comets are dirty snowballs. Absolutely ridiculous. But let's look at reality. What are comets? They discharge the solar capacitor. What we see is the tail material being drawn in to the negatively charged comet nucleus. And there's a great deal of other structure to the comet, including an electron beam coming out from the sun that passes all the way through the central region of the comet and far out to the far reaches of the solar system. That's what astronomers observe when they see a comet in the radio or ultraviolet or other spectrums. But they can't figure this out, so they just kind of ignore it and they don't really talk about those things too much. Or the fact that comets can light up like a light bulb, just like the ancients tell us. So what is the fact that general relativity, the Big Bang, and all of the cosmology that's being presented in the standard journals today, what does this have to do with the average guy on the street? Well, if you get rid of all of that and you put in the correct theories, which is, uh, the, which is extremely simple, gravity is the major player in the universe. Electricity and magnetism does not affect anything out there larger than a baseball. So everything we see pretty much obeys gravity's rules except the small stuff. That's why comets move in their orbits away from their uh, standard gravitational Keplerian orbit. They move to, and, and their orbits are altered because of the tail drag of this dust and material that they're dragging in. Very simple. All of these concepts are explained by one very simple central idea. The, the fact that fusion objects, the sun, galactic nucleus quasars are putting off a slight additional positive charge in their the wind, the solar wind, or the stellar wind, or the, what I call the fusion wind, or the proton wind. And this creates a capacitor around these which creates all the electrical effects and other effects that are observable. Uh, so, very simply put, all of the standard theories which are currently being taught in textbooks and in being placed and admonished and, and uh, built upon in the standard astrophysics journals, all of these are wrong. There is no dark matter. There's no expanding universe. And we can actually get back to a very normal set of rules of physics which explain everything we see.